all of a sudden one day she says she had a 28 inch worm come out of her body and i'm like no way sometimes you will not figure out why something is doing what it is and i've learned to have peace with that and that's something that i'm grateful for you'll find the magic but for me it was a coach just like you have a doctor i had a coach hey everyone Imagine struggling with chronic pain and ME-CFS for decades and then getting COVID and having that turn into long COVID with your life turning into the cycle of never ending doctor's visits, relying on oxygen and seeing no way out. That was Melody's life until listening to a health recovery summit gave her a spark of hope and helped her onto her path for recovery. If you're new here, I'm Raylan, and this channel is all about sharing recovery stories from ME-CFS and long COVID so that we, as a community, can come together, learn from each other's experiences, and keep finding our answers. Today, I am excited to introduce you to Melody from Deltona, Florida. Not fully recovered yet, but doing so much better. She is here with us today to talk about her experience, the things she tried, what didn't work, and most importantly, what did. Melody, it's so great to have you here. Thank you so much for doing this today. I am so excited to be here. Ah, uh, so you've had a journey with this. I Tell have us. had a true journey. Yeah. How did this all start? You know, I was a I'm a physician assistant. You know, I worked in an urgent care. And then all of a sudden, nobody would come to the urgent care because they were so scared of COVID. So he flipped it very quickly to a COVID testing center. And then we had lines going around the building. This was a huge building. I would see well over 100 people a day because he came up with the instant test, the little finger stick. And people were like, oh, I've got to have that. So, but I didn't get it from there. And I kept seeing all these people and they weren't that sick. So I thought, what is up with this? Is this real? Is it whatever? So my aunt had lost her husband, my uncle, and I flew to Ohio, easy trip, and we had a small dinner party with the family, and one of us was sick. As a result, all eight of us got COVID, all of our spouses got COVID, all anybody in our household got COVID, and I got a wicked strain. So I landed in the ICU for three weeks. At one point, I was on the highest level of oxygen before intubation. Then I broke two ribs from coughing. I herniated my neck and this pain came that would go down my arm and um, I offered to let him amputate. I was, it was that miserable. It was a terrible pain. So the cough was just so much, as I said, I broke my ribs, but I would, they did give me like a bedside potty. So I would actually beg God in my head, please don't let me cough this one time. Just let me, but every time I moved, the cough would start. Back when I did, it was October 2020. So with the October 2020, it had been around for a few months, but it was still new. So there wasn't a lot of choices in treatment. So they treated me with something that really in trials killed 55% of the people. So it was concerning, but I didn't get to be told that. All I got told was, oh, <laughs> sorry, this is all we have. This is all we're allowed to give. So each day was a gift. And my first, I'll tell you one quick story. My first night there, there was only two of us with COVID. You know, the media was saying it was in every room. Every hospital was overflowing, but there was only two of us in the hospital with COVID. Well, there was a code blue that night. And with the code blue, I just knew that it was the other person with COVID. I don't know why I felt that, but I felt it down deep. And um, I couldn't even speak out loud without taking a breath. I'd say a word, take a breath, say a word. My oxygen levels were in the low to mid-80s, um, pre-oxygen. So I go through all of that. I'm about two and a half weeks in, and I decide I've got to get stronger. I've got to get stronger. So instead of just flipping to the right of my bed, where the bedside table was to wash off, I thought, I'll walk around it. <laughs> They called a respiratory code on me. It, was, it wasn't my most brilliant move. So <laughs> when I did that, that was the first time a human touched me. Until that moment, they'd only done things to me. But when, they, when I couldn't breathe and I'm gasping and I'm, I'm in a chair, actually, because they threw it underneath me so I didn't fall to the floor. And 
a nurse, a nursing assistant, just started rubbing my shoulder. And she kept telling me I was going to be okay. And I remember declaring that first night, I will live and not die. Because it was so intense, the whole situation. And of course, back then you couldn't have visitors. So you've only got your head to think about things, you know, in your head. I couldn't talk on the phone because I couldn't breathe and talk. To eat was a total chore. You know, I'd, I'd take a bite and then rest and breathe. You know, I'd have the oxygen on and just lift it up, the mask. And then I would rest again. So I thought when I got out of the hospital, oh, I'll be back to work. This was in November. By this time, it was in October I was admitted. And I thought, I should be back to work by the new year. There should be no problem. I'm, I'm a worker. I've had up to three jobs at a time, you know, with different clinics and organizations. And so I thought, this won't be any big deal. And it was a very big deal. And come January, they kept extending somebody else working in my spot. They said, oh, we found somebody else. Don't worry. We found somebody else. Come February, I realized, I don't know how this is going to go. I came home on oxygen. The reason they let me come home on oxygen is because I'm a physician assistant and I was somewhat medical. And they asked me, are you comfortable? Sure. I failed the walk test. They do a three-minute walk test. I made it 20 seconds and my oxygen dropped to the low 80s. Um, without oxygen. So they knew my levels. So they knew that I needed oxygen no matter what, that it wasn't going to end at the hospital unless I stayed there for however long. Well, that would have been three years because I just got off the oxygen three months ago. I was doing everything everybody said. I was going along and all of a sudden I see a summit and it was actually Lori Rivers and she did a summit with chronic illness and long ME, CFS, long COVID, ME and CFS. Well, I also have three autoimmunes. And um, until that hospitalization, my neck had been fine, but every other spinal processes had been a mess. So I had functioned until that moment. Well, when COVID came along, Lori explained to me, it was like I had termites in my, my body or my house. And then all of a sudden, this tsunami comes along called COVID, and it wiped out the structure. It took out everything down to the foundation. My pain, I, I joked, and, but I, I, it wasn't a joke. It was the truth. It went to like a thousand times what it was before. So I'm walking around or sitting with an 8 to an 11 out of 10, I would say. And then um, the, the breath. I really couldn't walk to the bathroom without stopping and resting, and the bathroom was just a few feet. My husband had to pull me out of the bed. The shower had a, a stall, I mean a seat built in, and he would stand outside of it. And I had the oxygen on taking the shower because it was just overwhelming. And to try to breathe and shower, and my heart did its own little thing. It would go into the 140s without any stimuli. I would be sitting there, and all of a sudden, I get pale sweaty. I look down, my heart rate's 140. You know, the I went to physical therapy, and one time I said, can you see that? Because I didn't have glasses on, and my fitness little, and it was 140. So she was, let's sit down. <laughs> Panicked her a little. And that was something COVID brought, was the heart. You know, the that you stand up and remove, and suddenly it's jumping in tremendous rates. I was just looking through pictures this morning to look for something, and I saw one of my O2 stats was 80, 84. And my heart rate was like 107. My heart was trying to compensate for what my lungs weren't doing. But when you go to the pulmonologist, he would say, well, maybe it's your heart. You go to the cardiologist, well, I think it's your lungs. <laughs> you know, they go back and forth, and I just keep going. Then a rheumatologist jumped in, and then sleep studies, cardio, you know, just everything, everybody trying to fix me. But what they were truly doing was trying to build the plane as we were flying it. Because I just, nobody knew what to do. This was too new, too hard, too whatever. And I'm grateful that I didn't end on the vent because I had a good friend that did and passed away. I um, ECMO was another big thing. They were bypassing people's lungs and heart with this machine. And they even talked about that at one point with me, but we, I went, that was a very brief conversation. I'm like, no, no, thank you. Let's keep doing this. <laughs> you know, they were doing stuff from Europe in the hospital because they were about three weeks ahead of us. 
So the Europeans were figuring out some things. So the doctors were following. But it was, it was truly a time of confusion because I'm usually the one guiding everybody to fear, to just bereft, lost, anxious at times. It just was a mess, if you will, because I had never experienced something like this. You know, in 2018, I had started with, um, I was a politician, I'd gotten elected to a position, and it was very stressful. And all of a sudden, I had high blood pressure, then I'm having all these joint pains, and I'm diagnosed with Sjogren's chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. So, like I said, I kind of adapted my life. I only worked every other day. Then I slowed everything down. But then when COVID came along, I couldn't work. I couldn't function. I couldn't. I tried to go follow a doctor that wanted me to just do some on online information, and it wasn't happening. I would break out in a sweat. Heart rate would do its own thing. Life would just be a mess. So that's where I landed. So then I come along the summit, and she's interviewing you, along with <laughs> along with several doctors and people with experience with COVID. So I had to buy the summit because I couldn't keep up. It overwhelmed me. Oh, the brain fog. Don't forget that. Um, I couldn't even do a simple math problem. I couldn't read for the first two and a half to three years because I couldn't comprehend what I was reading. I came out with a tremor that was pretty strong and started paint by number. I just started doing what I would have told patients to try to see if I could get that function back of not shaking. And I did. But I was doing steps all along the way, but nothing was dramatic. It was still oxygen, 18 to 20 hours a day. It was still, brain fog was overwhelming at times, and functioning was impossible. Um, so I go along and I find out every, every hidden infection or every chronic disease has a hidden infection. Every chronic disease. There's something in there somewhere that's guiding this. And I'm used to Western medicine. We don't do, we don't think of that stuff. I worked anywhere from family practice to urgent care to cardiology to gastroenterology, pediatrics. I did everything and nobody ever brought up parasites. Nobody ever brought up fungus. Nobody brought up things that could possibly be a deep foundation of what's the termites. I laugh. When I was a pediatric nurse, I had scabies, and I had lice, and I had creeping eruption, which is this little parasite that gets in, under your skin and you can see it. Um, I had those things, but I thought I killed them. <laughs> I thought they went away. And then I was a plant-based eater, so I thought my diet was pristine that it was better than the average anybody's. Even in the hospital, I only ate clear weight. And um, I found out that's not the truth. And your salads that aren't cleaned as well at restaurants can be a source. The water that comes out of the tap can be a source. Your pets can be a source. Mm. Your parents, your mom that birthed you could have them and give them to you in utero. So I go along and Lori starts you on an eating plan. Oh, by the way, I decided that I couldn't do it by myself. All that she suggested and all those doctors, it was just too much information. So I did hire her as a coach. I joined her program and became her student. She calls us students. So I became her student and I discovered a lot of things that sometimes I would just shake my head <laughs> and think that's crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't admit that this I I thought now. And I honestly through the years I'd have some patience that would drop some things. And I can remember my physician saying, you know, horse poop's all natural, but it doesn't mean it's good for you. <laughs> so, so I, that was sometimes my philosophy, but I had worked with a functional medicine doctor in the end, and he taught me tremendous things. So I did have an open mind, but I won't say I had the knowledge. So when Lori started saying these things, what to do, I thought, okay, okay. And she guided, well, as soon as I started the eating plan, within a week, I could see worms in my stool. Oh. And I didn't know whether to laugh, cry, or throw up. 
<laughs> Here I am in Western medicine. You don't have worms in, in the United States. That's for another country. That's mm-hmm. for another another time, even not nowadays, not in the 21st century. So I keep going and um, then I start up. She has you develop your treatment plan. So I developed my treatment plan. She tells you and guides you on that. But you get to decide, which is what I love. What I've learned out of all of this, it's empowered me to know that I am in charge of what happens. So in the beginning, she was doing a little bit differently than she does now, six months ago. And we ordered our medications from other countries, the antifungals and the antiparasites. Mine got confiscated from the CDC. (laughs) I was so mad. Um, I even wrote them a letter because they said I couldn't get in trouble. So I just basically said, you're not helping me here. They don't have, you don't have the knowledge in the U S I have to have these. And now you're taking away my treatment. I was so upset. Um, but fortunately that pharmacy resent them at no cost to me. And I did get the second batch. I, of course, had prayed that God would blind their eyes. They wouldn't even see it. They wouldn't notice it because <laughs> I was so committed to doing the plan. <laughs> but I have learned so much, even about myself. At one point, I've never had a depression in my life. I might be sad at times, like anybody, but I never dealt with that. And that even became a thought in my head. Well, maybe I'm, I'm depressed. I'm not a complainer. But what I have discovered, I'm an explainer. So I may explain something that happened with me, but I'm not complaining about it. I'm just letting someone know. So that when somebody taught me that, I thought, oh, that's good. That was a good friend. And I thought, that's good because I don't want to be negative. I, I want to help people progress and get along. So that was my long story. <laughs> wow. What a journey. Cause, and this all started, we haven't even, you know, dove into everything that happened before COVID. You've had your, you know, your, your journey with MECFS and, and different conditions. And then to be hit with such a severe form of COVID, I, I can't even imagine. So incredible, though, that you did eventually, I know it, it was a long, hellish journey to get there, but um, found something that was working with you. I'm wondering when you co-created this recovery program for yourself while working with Lori, what were, what do you think were the biggest pieces of it that have helped get you where you are right now? She has something, the support every week I'm talking to her with a group and she's in, we fill out our questionnaire and we fill out where we're at, what we're taking, because we're all in different places. So that's a reminder I have to constantly, she needs just a little note. So what helped in the beginning was she made me take a quiz. And in this quiz, it told me what level I was at, a one through five. Five means you're healthy. You're able to do anything. One is you're pretty much bedridden. So I was a two. I wasn't a one because I could get out of the bed and I could walk and I could do things. But the the shocker was I was that low to me. And when another shocker was when I went to physical therapy and I couldn't get out of a chair without using my hands. He had me put my arms across my chest and get up and I couldn't, I was just stunned that I was so weak. Well, anyway, she also has, so you had to figure out where you're at. Then she has um, energy envelopes and you fill out and discover what takes a little more energy. So for me, even human interaction was energy sucking in the beginning. It just wore me out to to engage with others more than a short, short time. And um, so I learned to limit that and not beat myself up, you know, because you want to please others and you want to be social. And I was so social before. And then all of a sudden I'm not. So then she calls them meditations and it's it's called radical rest. And for 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon, you can either go sleep, you can listen to music, but you can't play on your phone, she said. And so I actually do some combination at that time. I take methylene blue as part of that summit. And um, 30 minutes after you take it, you should use the red light over your liver. And so I do that. That's my 30 minute first one. So that makes it easy. That makes it comfortable. 
And then um, it doesn't feel like I'm wasting time. I got to admit, the second one, I don't always get in now that I'm feeling bad. <laughs> That's another thing. You got to be careful because you don't want to crash. When you crash, it just takes you, it doesn't just take you backwards. Sometimes it even takes your baseline down. Yeah. So she taught me that, that I couldn't, you know, I can do things by all means, but I have to know my limits. You know, even she taught us if we go to a party or a gathering to have one person there that's our buddy that can watch us and notice or time it and say, okay, let's go. And you can warn the guest, the hostess, if you need to, you know, that I was invited recently. I'm just learning to sew. It's exciting. It doesn't sound like it, but I've never seen myself as artsy fartsy. I've only <laughs> seen myself as clinical managed go. So I'm taking this beginning sewing class in a church and she, they're having a quilt show. Well, she mentions that they're, they're going to leave it, be there at 9am and not leave till three in the afternoon. There's no way I can still do that. So I, um, drove myself, stayed my hour, hour and a half, enjoyed myself thoroughly and left without guilt. I didn't, you know, I didn't push that on to anybody. And that's something that's made me stronger. Um, another thing is advocating for myself with physicians. I actually, the rheumatologist that I mentioned, he's brilliant. He knew that I couldn't take most of the current medications for the pain for rheumatology because of my heart. So he went down the list. He picked an old one. But guess what? It could make me blind. I had to go to the eye doctor every six months. I had to be careful. And so I took it and saw him every six months, saw the eye doctor every six months. Here I am two years later. The pain's still just as much in my mind. It's probably a little bit better. And three, two and a half years. So I say to him, I get to his office. First of all, I'm on oxygen. He has me wait. It was almost two hours. He was late. He thought I didn't do that to patients. <laughs> so I already felt terrible. I was tired. I was worn out. I've sat there for two hours. My O2, everything. So I finally get in the room. He socializes for a couple minutes. Offers me nothing. I'm telling him I'm in pain. Pale, I'm sweaty. He closed up the computer. Told me he'd see me in six months. I left crying. He didn't see that part. I waited till I got out of the room. So after I thought this, that was the day I thought I have to take control of this. I don't have a choice anymore. Nobody's helping me. So I go start researching. So the first thing I did, I did hire a dietitian because I'd never heard of AIP autoimmune protocol diet. And a doctor had told me I've never healed anybody that was plant-based with autoimmune ever. Because if you can find somebody, let them provide that proof. He goes and go with them. He was just so authentic. And um, I thought, okay, that's funny. So just telling you at all, first meat I ate, I gagged, I heaved. Because I'd been years of eating just plants. It wasn't what I want. So then my mom says, oh, get some ground meat in a soup. That way you won't notice it. She was right. That worked. So from then on, I gradually, slowly worked to eating meat. I just thought, like I said, I thought my diet was pristine, that I was on the ultimate diet. And through all this, I discovered now, not for my body, not for autoimmune. So then I did the dietitian. I didn't notice. I did notice an improvement in pain pretty quick, but I didn't know. I was eating a lot of fruit still. I was still eating sugar. I was still the plantain chips. Oh my gosh. I love those because you couldn't have potatoes anymore. So I was creating other ways to substitute what I liked and I didn't lose a pound. And that's always been my obsession my adult life so I say to the dietitian she goes you need to heal first and she's right so that's when I flipped to my mind to only this is all about my healing I'm not going to obsess on the scale I'm not going to do what I used to do I'm going to do all that things and um so I get with Lori and hers is more strict <laughs> 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 because it works but it was much more cemented in what I could eat versus what I couldn't eat. So I did. I, I'm very, I'm pretty black and white. If you tell me something's going to help me, then I'm going to at least try. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to dabble because I know that doesn't work in medicine. And so after almost 40 years in medicine, I knew that I had to do what was necessary. So I went on that eating plan within two days. I was pristine again with what she wanted. 
I only, it's funny. My husband will say, you want to go out to eat? I'm like, no, my food tastes better. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's, 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 I'm so it's why bother 90% of the time I do go out, but I I keep it so simple. Eating a vegetable, you know, I, I don't, I just keep it very simple when I'm out, but I am, I've noticed the more clean I am on my eating and the more the supplements she started are what I think has really made a huge difference. Um, they did even, what happened was she was telling a story. I know she doesn't mind this because I think she did a video on it. I hope so. Um, <laughs> poor Lori. So she did this video and she was trying this company and it's called Cellcor and it's, it's mandatory. You have a practitioner. You can't just go buy it yourself. So she, um, is doing this company and all of a sudden one day she says she had a 28 inch worm come out of her body. She's this tiny little cute thing. And I'm like, no way. Mm-hmm. Well, then I developed <laughs> joke about it. I developed worm envy because <laughs> I was just having little baby ones. <laughs> and um, I thought as sick as I am, there has to be more to this. There has to be more inside of me. I have another cute story. I did pediatrics and this mom comes in and with her, she brings a cool bowl and a worm, a flat worm. I knew it was a tap tape flat worm and it was huge. And she's freaked out. And she says, this was in the jacuzzi with her two year old. And she thinks mm-hmm. it's come out of him. So I send it to the lab and I say, please tell us what this is. And instead of identifying it, they threw it away. I was mad. Well, I call her. At first, I tell them they have to call her because they made the mistake. <laughs> then I decide, no, I'll call her. So I call her, and she starts laughing. She goes, we caught a raccoon in our, <laughs> in our hot tub. <laughs> it wasn't from the baby. But now that I've seen what I've seen, <laughs> I would believe it if somebody came in you know, and told me this. And um, Well, even myself. So after I started Cellcor, probably within – three to four weeks, I'm putting out four, six, eight, twelve. 12, finally got to a, I think a 20 inch worm and told her I'm getting competitive now, you know, and joked with her. It becomes a joke after a while. I, I, I said, I'm full of just a big bag of worms. Um, but today I set the new record to my knowledge. Um, I had a 38 inch worm and I took a picture with a tape measure because <laughs> how do you believe this unless you see it? And I know it's gross. I know it's gross. You know, you, you only see about 10% of what's coming out, 10 to 20%. So I wonder all that stuff. And with those parasites becomes the microbiome. They bring their own microbiome. So whatever they were eating on, they bring to you. So eventually, if this doesn't all go away with the, I'm in a, Cellcore has a, just a foundational program and then a more intensive program. And of course I'm in the intensive because it's going to be, so that's 10 months. If I don't feel like I'm better, then I'll go looking deeper because I have a lot of symptoms of Lyme disease as well. And I, I know they treat for it. So I'm hoping that it, it resolves it. But each time you have these expelling of all these parasites or these big ones you're exhausted you're not as clear for a little bit because your body's readjusting every time Mm -hmm. recently she said to me would you like to stop your your probiotic and i said oh i don't know i i've been on forever and the one time i tried to stop for her it it was bad so i said okay i'll try it i mean i i will i'll do what she says I mean, because she's wise. So she, um, I did it and gosh, I had heartburn, 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 heartburn. So, but at the same time, I ran out of another product called drainage activator that was helping the tubes drain. So when you're going through this journey, you'll ask yourself a million questions. And sometimes you will not figure out why something is doing what it is in your body. And I've learned to have peace with that. I've learned to let go of having to know every little detail. And that's something that I'm grateful for. So grateful. And I'm even grateful. COVID, this slowed us down. When you face death, and I did, um, you learn that life isn't about racing around, doing crazy things, 
and just so you can say you did it. Now it's about being present, enjoying the moment. Yes, I still walk slow because I still can get short of breath if I go too fast. I'm still not allowed to exercise, even though I'm doing all this cool stuff. You know, now that I couldn't do, I can make a bed now. <laughs> I couldn't make a bed at all. Now I can make it without, easy, easy peasy. I can, you know, I can carry the laundry. I couldn't carry the laundry for years because it was just too heavy. I couldn't do so many things. And now I'm like so grateful for each one I can do. Lori's big on wins. You have to tell a win every week, even if you think it's not a big deal. So I went to my parents' house one week. My win was I went to my parents' house. And in the olden days, pre-illness, I would just sit down on the floor and pick out a DVD or, you know, put the DVD in or do whatever down by the TV. Old habits die hard. So I plopped down on the floor. And then in my head, I went, oh, how am I going to get up? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and because there's nothing around me that I can pull on or do anything. I think this one works. <laughs> All of a sudden, I got on my knees and I got up. And I was just like, whoa, this is a huge win. This is huge. You know, in my mind. And it's that stuff you, you get excited about after you've faced so much. I did become disabled through all of this. I told God, you get me well, then I'll go back to work. I don't mind your kitty fluffing. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a dog, but it's a cold. Oh, I see. <laughs> I, my dog fluffs. I had never seen that yet. That's why I was like, oh, your kitty's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Does that too. Sorry. Um, Usually Whoa. he's quiet. I don't know what he's doing. That's he's having a nightmare when you were talking about the worms. I don't think that's a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> that fun i could tell you so many crazy things but i do want everybody to know there really is help out there now there wasn't help three years ago it was all of us trying to figure it out and if it's not listening to you so many encouraging stories you know there is a coach there for you somewhere yeah and i've actually am training that coach with Lori, and um because i'm so impressed with what happened for me you know, if, if I had sat there for a year, maybe I wouldn't be as excited. But some people don't heal as fast. But don't give up. Just don't give up. Yeah, there's so much out there. And that's one of the things I really try and do with this channel is just not filter any of it. Just whatever worked for you, let's put it out there and put out as many different things as possible. And I know you can be going through and watching videos and trying these things and feeling like you're getting nowhere. But so many people tell me there's that one where it just resonates and it just clicks. Yeah. So it's like this feeling like you're just one video away. You could be just yeah. one video away from what you need, even though you've already watched a hundred. <laughs> what a shame it would be to give up right before that next one that, that might be what, you know, has a key piece of what you need. So yeah, there's so much information, so many answers. <laughs> Never a better time to get sick. <laughs> well, they're now tying COVID. Yeah. You know, we're dealing with the inflammation medically. We're not dealing with the inflammation. We throw a pill at it. Yeah. And we don't fix the root. And that's, COVID brought that out. So now there's these tremendous studies. There's these tremendous things that are being figured out all of a sudden with the inflammation. With the, and then they're tight. Now they're realizing, oh, this kind of goes along with autoimmune disease. Oh, this kind of goes along with COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, COVID, you know, they're tying it together finally. You know, I did the augmented NAC. I had done an acystoline before, but not augmented in acystoline. And I got to hear those men speak. I think there was two of them. But I got to hear them speak, and I was just so impressed that your spike proteins are leaving within three days. So for me, I got it before I even talked to Lori. You know, I bought the Parify kit before I talked to Lori. I, I was so, and then I realized if you're not careful when you're chronically ill, what we were just talking about, you go from one to the next thing and you don't know what to do and what's working, what's not working, like throwing spaghetti against the wall and hoping against hope that you will, you'll find the magic button, the magic cure. So for me, it was a coach. I would, just like you have a doctor, I had a coach. You know, I had somebody that could guide me and give me direction and help me understand. 
Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain all this. I'm sure there's many things in here for people watching, whether it's nuggets of information or insight they hadn't thought of, or just things that just resonate and normalize their own experience. I think it some, sometimes can feel like we're going through this all alone, even though there are millions of us that have maybe not the same experience, but they, they get it. Um, so, Completely. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I encourage somebody to not give up. Don't yeah. So thank you so much for doing this today, Melody. I really appreciate it. And making it available to others. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And if people watching, if you're curious about learning more about parasites, I actually had my own bout with parasites and I did a video about it and I interviewed an expert on it who kind of breaks down some of this stuff. So I'll, I'll link it here at the end of this video and in the video description. It's a wildly popular video. People love talking about parasites, but it's a really good thing to look into because if this is something that's happening in your body, you need to deal with it. <laughs> All the meditation in the world probably isn't going to get rid of them. <laughs> Well, looking forward to the comments of those of you watching as always. I bet there's going to be some good ones from this one. Yeah, I thank you for watching. I hope whatever you you who are watching this are facing right now, just you're doing okay, that you keep at it. I know it can be an absolute nightmare, but the best thing you can do is just not give up and keep searching until you find your answers. I totally believe you've got this. Thank you for watching this. I hope you got something out of this video and I hope to see you in this next Heads up, kind of gross, parasites video. <laughs>